Secretary of State Antony Blinken is back in the U.S. after visiting Guatemala to discuss, quote, humane migration management with Western Hemisphere leaders. That's the third continent in the last eight days for America's top diplomat. Travel is part of the job, obviously, but we wanted to take a look at Blinken's schedule as a way of understanding the complex web of U.S. foreign policy interests. A month ago, Secretary Blinken started in France and Belgium, meeting with European and U.N. leaders about everything from the ongoing wars in Ukraine and Gaza to the situation in Haiti to enhancing Europe's trade cooperation with the U.S. The trip also coincided with NATO's 75th anniversary at a time when the organization is considering the historic admission of Ukraine. A little less than two weeks later, he was back in Europe attending the G7 foreign ministers meeting, a gathering of chief diplomats from the world's largest economies. Topics included climate change, those wars again, and how misinformation destabilizes the G7 nations. A few days later, China, a visit to America's biggest global competitor. Among the many issues Blinken pressed PRC leaders on was the disruption of the global flow of synthetic drugs like fentanyl which Blinken also addressed last week during a trip to Arizona and an emergency call center. April ended with a trip to the Middle East to advocate for a potential hostage deal between Israel and Hamas. It was his seventh trip there since October 7th when Hamas attacked. He also stopped by the World Economic Forum in Saudi Arabia to talk about economic and climate issues with Gulf leaders. The travel patterns of a Secretary of State offer a snapshot of an administration's foreign policy priorities and also tell us something about the unpredictable and volatile menu of challenges facing America's leaders. To discuss that global landscape six months before the election, we're joined by John Alterman, Senior Vice President at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. John, thank you for being with us. When you look at the global set of challenges facing this administration and the next one and that travel by the Secretary of State, What's your assessment of the world out there? The world is a mess, and there is a lot you can do by phone, and there's a lot you have to be in person to handle, and the Secretary of State is doing it in person. And, you know, part of the, the biggest, there's a problem of just stamina and how you keep circling all those time zones one after the other. The other is drinking from the fire hose, keeping straight. You're in this country, these are the issues. Another country, those are the issues. And he's doing a full-time job while constantly being on the move and constantly changing his focus. It's a tremendous, tremendous act of stamina. And you've worked at the State Department, and you're an expert on the Middle East. The term shuttle diplomacy was born in the middle of a war in Israel back in the 70s. Blinken has now been to the region numerous times. Give us a sense. You were talking about the stamina. Give us a sense of what the what the, those visits are like. What's the hope for them? What kind of what happens in that shuttle diplomacy? Well, I think the shuttle diplomacy has become much more intensive, you know, partly because everybody's connected by phone and you're dealing with social media, you're dealing with all these different information streams. I think one of the particular problems that Blinken has is it's not clear people are done fighting in this conflict. And so he's trying to move people forward. One of the things I find really striking is there's a theme in all the things I hear him talking about. He keeps talking about we need to recognize the humanity of the victims here. I heard, I met him and saw him talking at a, an event in, in February about uh, people who were being held hostage overseas. He was talking about humanity. The idea that you can do all those, keep it all straight, and actually be focused on the idea that, that people are affected by what you do, you're trying to improve people's lives, I think is tremendously difficult, and he stays focused. You mentioned social media, the streams of information which, uh, which an administration has to take in, make choices, and then send their people out, the Secretary of State being the primary one. Are we in a new era of diplomacy? And if so, how should we think about the requirements of that new diplomatic era? Look, we're, we're partly a new era of diplomacy because television started it. We talked about the CNN effect, constant streaming. Everybody has access. Everybody has cheap telephone calls, free telephone calls. We're in a world where there's too much information, and the Secretary of State is still trying to deal with a tiny number of people who have tremendous power to make decisions and persuade them to do what they otherwise wouldn't do. That's really hard to do, and he's doing it while constantly changing his clock around. One of the things they used to say about Secretary of State Jim Baker is he had his own time zone. Yeah. And there were times there were two, three, four in the morning, and he would be working full time, and everybody on the team would be working full time. 
because the Secretary of State's job really never sleeps. And I want to ask you finally, John, about a specific question about these latest developments, given your Middle East expertise. How has the weapons decision by the Biden administration, how has that changed things? Are we at a new stage now in relationships between U.S. and Israel? We're at a new public stage. It wouldn't surprise me if there were times before when the U.S. either explicitly or implicitly held up some shipments to Israel. But the fact that, that everybody is talking about it, this is the U.S. flexing its muscles. It's reminding the Israeli government, but also the Israeli public, that the United States has interests it's going to advance. I think combined with the, the, the impending action in Rafah, the ongoing action in Rafah, I think we are likely to be entering a new phase. John Alterman with the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Thank you so much, John.